I'm going to introduce and um, Marie Fetivo, who actually wasn't ready to speak yet. <laughs> uh, Marie is an R&D engineer and pipeline technical director at Rodeo FX, uh, specializing in color, IOs, and matte painting problematics. She has contributed to numerous challenging projects, including Fantastic Four, Furious 7, and Game of Thrones Season 5. Previously, she worked at Micros Image, where she developed and managed open source and proprietary projects for digital cinema, color pipeline, and image processing. Marie has a strong interest in ACES, and more generally, in visual perception coherency. So please help me welcome Marie. And hopefully this one. Thank you, Sebastian. So the goal of this presentation is to be a number, uh, small vendor perspective, and uh, especially focused on the creative processes we use uh, in uh, uh, our two ACES show. So as a small vendor uh, on most of our show, uh, we share the work with several other vendors, which means that we receive for each project some specification, and uh, we have to figure out uh, how to respect them so that at the end the client receives the uh, pictures in it. So this is especially why ACES is important for smaller vendors. Having a right and standardized way to work uh, will allow us to gain a lot of time. So first, here's our classical I.O. and color pipeline. So we receive some plates and some color package that can contain lookup table, color decision list, etc. Ingesting the plate consists in moving them in the right directory with the right naming and eventually convert them into another call space, another real resolution, and uh, another format, for example. Ingesting the colors uh, means reprocessing them uh, so they can fit our color pipeline, so it can be reprocessing them into another lookup table or reprocessing them by scripting them into our pipeline. So at the end, in RV, Nuke, or every software we use, we can see the color uh, as they must be. Uh, donc, currently, uh, at Rodeo, we uh, have two ACES shows. They are both a uh, big production with multiple vendors. The first show started in summer 2014, so it was before the release of ACES 1.0. So the first thing we have to figure out was to find a color space to work in. And we happened to choose the REC 2020. The second show started this summer, so by this time, uh, ACES CG was out for a long time. So basically, REC 2020 and ACES CG are two color spaces that are quite similar. So the feelings and the look when working with them is, is really alike, which means that uh, even if the color space is, is different, the two show are really, really alike. Uh, here's an example of the color protein we can receive uh, from the client. Uh, the first thing uh, you must know is that the plates we receive are already converted from uh, the camera row to ACES using the input device transform. And then we receive a color package that contains several uh, elements. Uh, in the case of a, an ACES pipeline, we receive a matrix uh, that uh, allow us to go from ACES to ACES CG. Then we have a link to ACES CC 1D lot, some per shot grading, and uh, finally we have a REC 709, for example, or a DCI 3D uh, lookup table, which uh, embed uh, the rendering transform and the output device transform. So the first thing, uh, the first decision we took uh, when we got to plate uh, is to white balance them. It was quite convenient because uh, we also received for each plate a corresponding color chart plate. So white balancing the plate from the start allows us to avoid to countergrade uh, the plates considering the CDL that are not really um, valuable for us. It also allows us to avoid to do too much grading at matte, matte painting step, which is done in Photoshop. And uh, finally, um, at comb step, 
if uh, the plates are already neutralized, every tool will work better, like tool like this pill and here. So here's uh, how it impacts our IO and color pipeline. So right from the start, when we ingest the plate, we convert them into uh, ACCC using the matrix, which is totally uh, reversible, by the way. And internally, we uh, get rid of the CDL that are not helpful for delivery. The only thing we have to do for AXR is to revert the uh, white balance we made and the ACs, uh, CC conversion. And for the deliverable, uh, the quick time one, we invert the white balance and then apply the uh, color protein that was uh, the ACs color protein, I must say. Uh, at CG step, as um, the, color, the software we use are quite color agnostic, it makes sense to take uh, our new working plate that are white balance and in ACCG and use them as a reference. And as it is, what we are going to produce and render is going to be ACCG or REC2020. We tested that on several shots and it happened to work, to work really well. But unfortunately, by the time we decided this pipeline, a lot of uh, work texture uh, uh, were already made uh, and in sRGB and with software that wasn't really ACES friendly. So, um, so that this experience uh, remains something nice for everyone, including artists, so, so that, that they wouldn't have to convert manually all the sRGB texture into ACCG. And as the pipeline was not really ready to do it uh, automatically, we decided uh, just for now to keep that step into SRGB. Another concession we have to, to make is uh, about Photoshop. So in Photoshop, uh, the, if you are using the float mode, uh, most of the tools you like to use are disabled. So the only, the only nice way to work remains to be in 16-bit uh, uh, int mode. But by doing this conversion, we don't want to clump the black values and the white value. So what we use is a simple uh, reversible couple of mathematical function that remap the range between 0 and 1. Uh, and also, uh, more for user experience reason, we also keep that step into sRGB. So we have a plate, a working plate, we convert them into that math space with our mathematical function and into sRGB, which means what the artist load in Photoshop is already something he like to see. It's sRGB and all the thing that is uh, looking at, like the reference images, like the images they find uh, on the internet, is looking like that. So this is really pleasing for him. And then with the soft proofing mechanism of Photoshop, he can switch from this view to the final ACS look view. If you want to import an image from the outside, he uh, has some tool to convert the image into that matte space. And when you want to export his work, he can invert the matte space and get some EXR plate like before, or bake the ICC profile in the plate and then can get a proxy. So the first conclusion is that the compositor happened to really like to work in REC 2020 and ACCG. Uh, it feels for them really natural and actually the work, uh, the tool they, they, they use uh, worked really well with uh, those color space. Uh, also, uh, white balancing the plate from the start uh, allows us to gain a lot, a lot of time and uh, also a lot of serenity. And the ACES workflow, even with our uh, little sRGB detour, uh, happened to be a very efficient way to standardize a simple and reputable way to work. So what next for us? As ACES is going to be the way to work, what we need to do is uh, rely on open colorio more because with our white balance mechanisms, we introduce uh, many more ways to see image. So uh, having some lookup table is not enough. A real conf configuration is necessary. 
Also, we started to name the plate from the color space they contain, and we need to extend that because it's important for the artist to identify the plate and the images. And finally, we need to get rid of all those uh, sRGB steps, and this means be able to manage the colors uh, correctly in every software we use. So here's our uh, ideal color pipeline based on ACES and uh, OpenColorIO. Uh, 